the flute player. Down the main road past big yellow buses, cars, pony drawn tongas, motorcycles and bullock carts. The steady flow of traffic seemed somehow to form a barrier between the city on one side of the trunk road and the distant sleepy villages on the other. It seemed to cut India in half. The India Kamla knew slightly and the India she had never seen. Kamla's grandmother lived on the outskirts of the city of Jaipur and just across the road from the house. There were fields and villages stretching away for hundreds of miles. Kamla was used to city life. In England, it was London and Manchester. In India, it was Delhi and Jaipur. Her parents lived in Manchester, where her father was a doctor in a large hospital. She went to school in England. But this year, during the summer holidays, she had come to India to stay with her grandmother. Finally, when there were only two days left, before she went to Delhi to board a plane to London, she made up her mind and crossed the main road. She did this in the afternoon, when grandmother was asleep and the maidservant was in the bazaar. She slipped out of the back door. Her slippers kicked up dust as she ran down the path to the main road. A bus roared past and more dust rose from the road and swirled about her. Kamla ran through the dust, past the jacaranda trees that lined the roads and into the fields. Kamla could see a camel moving around a well, drawing up water for the fields. She sat out in the direction of the camel. The camel was turning the wheel by itself, moving round and round the well, while the water kept gushing up in little trays to run down the channels into the fields. There must be someone here, thought Kamla, walking towards a mango tree that grew a few yards away. Ripe mangoes dangled like globules of gold from its branches. Under the tree, fast asleep, was a boy. Kamla came nearer to the sleeping boy, peering at him with some curiosity, for she had not seen a village boy before. Her shadow fell across his face. The coming of the shadow woke the boy. He opened his eyes and stared at Kamla. When she did not say anything, he sat up, his head a little to one side, his hands clasping his knees, and stared at her. Who are you? He asked a little gruffly. He was not used to waking up and finding a strange girl staring at him. I'm Kamla. I've come from England. But I'm really from India. I mean, I've come home to India, but I'm really from England. I am the strongest boy in the village. My name is Romi. I can wrestle and swim and climb any tree. And do you sleep a lot? Romi scratched his head and grinned. I must look after the camel. It is no use staying awake for the camel. It keeps on going round the well until it is tired and then it stops. When it has rested, it starts going around again. It can carry on like that all day. But it eats a lot. Where do you swim? asked Kamla. Down in the well? Of course not. I am not a frog. There is a canal not far from here. Come, I will show you. They reached the canal. It was a small canal, about 10 meters wide, only waist deep in the middle. But it was very muddy at the bottom. She had never seen such a muddy stream in her life. 
Would you like to get in? No, you get in. Romy swam across to the opposite bank and then back again. When he climbed out of the water, he was covered with mud. It made him look quite fierce. Come on in. He invited Kamla. It's not deep. It's dirty, said Kamla, but she felt tempted to. It's only mud, said Romy. Look, exclaimed Kamla, pointing to the ground where the tortoise had been lying. What's in the hole? They peered into the hole. It was about half a meter deep, and at the bottom were five or six white eggs, a little smaller than a hen's eggs. Put it back, said Kamla. It was sitting on its eggs. Romy shrugged and dropped the tortoise back on its hole. Kamla noticed a flute lying on the grass. Is it your flute? she asked. Yes, it is an old flute, but the old ones are best. I found it lying in a field last year. And Romy put the flute to his lips and began to play. It was a slow, sweet tune, a little sad, a little happy, and the notes were taken up by the breeze and carried across the fields. Kamla was charmed by the music as she watched Romy while he played, and the boy smiled at her with his eyes and ran his fingers along the flute. Kamla stood up to leave. When will you come again? I will try to come next year. Romy put the flute in her hands. You keep it. I can get another one. But I don't know how to play it. It will play by itself. She took the flute and put it to her lips and blew on it, producing a squeaky little note that startled a lone parrot out of the mango tree. Romy laughed. And while he was laughing, Kamla turned and ran down the path through the fields. When she had gone some distance, she turned and waved to Romy with the flute. He stood near the well and waved back to her. Was England home? wondered Kamla. Or was this Indian city home? Or was her true home in that other India across the busy trunk road. Perhaps she would find out one day.